All right. Welcome to another exciting episode of the Pats Minutes Podcast. I am joined by with Ali Covington, and I'll let her introduce herself, but she is um I'll let, no, I'll go ahead and let you introduce yourself. I'm not gonna do it for you. <laughs> Are you kidding? I like it when somebody else introduces me. I sound weird. You do? I still can. I am. <laughs> okay. You are a fitness instructor. You um, created an algorithm that I don't fully understand, but I'm still impressed by that helps people uh, create the right nutritional meal plans for themselves. Okay, never mind. I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, you can do better than me. I believe in you. <laughs> You're going to give a whole lot of misinformation. So, um, I'm good at that. Yeah. <laughs> What, uh, my, my, um, CV when, when it comes to fitness and, and science is pretty extensive. So I'm going to try to shorten it up unless you want like the whole long version. But, okay. What's your CV? What does that mean? My resume. There you go. All right. <laughs> resume, right. The Latin for it. Latin for resume, mate. I, I don't think I've ever heard people say that before. Really? I don't know. Is huh. it resume fancy enough? It sounds Latin. Apparently not. It's Italian. I don't know. <laughs> Curriculum vitae is what it stands for. <laughs> um, anyway, so I I started I started doing all of this stuff when I was pre med at UCI. Went on to be a doctor, and that's when I got licensed as a personal trainer. And that was going to be my college job. You know how some people wait tables and stuff like that. I was like, oh, I'll just go be an instructor. I'll get a couple of certifications. I'll train people. This will be fun, right? I want to get paid to work out. So. While I was in college, I created the first group exercise weight training class. So now you go into a big gym and you see Les Mills body pump, but my class preceded that in the mid 90s. So, um, and then it was still being used until about 2012, 2013 in 24 Hour Fitness. And then Les Mills came in and with his brand and took over and all that. Um, but that was pretty cool. So, because I was a Brooke College student, I didn't didn't trademark it, didn't, didn't do anything with it. But that was my very first foray into scaling personal training. So then while I was in my financial business and rocking and rolling there, when uh, right after my daughter was born, I, was, I started writing an algorithm to create personal training for individuals remotely. And what I did is I took all of the contraindications, what that means is anything in your body that hurts or doesn't work right, right? Like your shoulder that you were talking about before we started recording, knees, things like that. I know you had yeah. a knee issue. I may still have an IT band issue that I haven't taken care of yet. All of those things play a part in how well you can weight train. And there isn't a single class on the planet that takes that into account. And so all of the apps that I've seen, they're all pre-made workouts. So you're going to be the one that has to figure out whether or not you can do a particular exercise based on your particular set of contraindications or limitations. And so I wrote an algorithm that does that for me. Wow. So you just fill out the information and you get a very customized workout and then you feed back your experience back into my software and it further customizes it for you. So that's... that's right, so you got a personalized tailor fit workout plan that suits everybody's needs and limitations. That's, that's amazing. Exactly. If it suits yeah. their goals, their particular body type, all their injuries, whether they're working out at home or in the gym. Uh, what kind of equipment they have to use, everything. Everything's taken into account. Just okay. like I would take into account if we were talking and you said, okay, Ali, I've got, I've, I've got a couple of dumbbells and I've got a bike at home, but I need to work out at home. What can I do? And then when we're done with this, I want to go back to the gym. What can we do there too? Your workouts are going to be completely different from, let's say you had a twin brother who might have bands at home, okay. right? And might have no dumbbells, but might have a ball instead. Or maybe you guys have the exact same equipment, the exact same body type, the exact same DNA, the exact same everything. Your experience is going to be very different from one exercise to the next to the next. Because over the course of your growing up with your twin brother, this is just an example. I know you don't have one. <laughs> over the course of your growing up with your brother, your different activity levels have changed your particular body. 
right? So you might have helped your dad out in the yard more. And so your biceps or your back might be a little bit stronger than your brother's. And so even if you started off with the exact same workout, your particular set of attributes, like your strength and endurance and so on is unique to you. And so your experience feeding back into my software further customizes the, the future programs and workouts for you based on that, on that information. Just awesome. like if I were training you personally right there. That's amazing. Cause especially right now where a lot of people are stuck in their houses and they're trying to, some people already had the home gym set up. Other people are trying to kind of cobble one together. And from pictures I've seen online, they're doing a pretty good job. So what about yeah. the people that couldn't find any equipment or just don't have anything yet? Can, do you have stuff uh, where it's all like body weight exercise? <laughs> you, don't have, you, you had a ball, I saw. I have a ball. <laughs> I, have, I had some bands. and But those are bands that I would take to the gym with me too. So it wasn't okay. like I was building a home gym. And you know why I had the ball? Because it was my chair. It was my <laughs> office chair for years and years and years while I was pregnant. So I sat on my ball instead of sitting in a chair. Like you're sitting in, you should get a ball to sit on. Did you get a ball? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I can handle it. It's just, you could. It, is it like, what, what's the point of the, the ball? Does it make my core stronger? Is that the idea? So your glutes are going to have to fire all the time. Your core is going to have to fire all the time. You're going to notice that your back is super sore after just one day. Really? Of Maybe after just an hour of sitting on the ball. Mm -hmm. Because it forces you into perfect posture. That's good. And, and you find out just how weak your back is. Ah, I can see yeah. that. Not how weak your abs are, but how weak your back is. I would not and have then, thought of that. Then you're going to find your glutes are going to be a lot tighter from sitting on the ball and trying to stabilize your, trying to stabilize your hips. <laughs> you, do that, you do that long enough and um, it's just a nice mini workout for you anyway. I'll look into that. I'm, I'm actually pretty decent okay. about not sitting down in a chair too long. I do get up. I got the, uh, the exercise bike behind me. But a chair is still stable where a it's ball still is stable. not. Yeah, that takes some getting used to. So do you sit in the ball like literally all day long or do you like kind of swap it in and I out with the chair? Do. When I worked in an office, I sat on my ball all day long. Now, working at home, I don't mind like using the ball, but working in an office, I don't know if I can <laughs> sit in the ball in front of people. In I totally did it for years. I have clients come in and sit in front of me and they'd, they'd be like, you're sitting on a ball. And I'd be sitting on a ball in a dress and heels, by the way. That's impressive. Just I feel like that together, right? Yeah. <laughs> I had a glass you table top. Them. They could but they actually, it was a it was a novelty. It was a really great yeah. conversation piece because I did, and as I got energetic in the conversation, I'd bounce a little, <laughs> and they'd get like more energized, and you know, yeah, it's a it's a hell of a lot of fun. All right, I'm I'm kind of getting convinced. So. Yeah, it was super fun. I, so I have those <laughs> things around anyway, and I just decided, all right, I'll use them. I'm not sure if I can go buy a ball right now. I don't know if our like sports stores are open or not. I assume I, I would I, order it. You'd order a ball off Amazon. I don't know that I would go to Amazon. I Google. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so Spry. Does it ship in a giant box? <laughs> no, it ships deflated. I'm sure. Oh, you can inflate them. Yeah, okay. if you have an air compressor, just oh. inflate it that way. Okay. Yeah. So you, it, I would go to Spry, the search for Spry bands, because they should Spry have bands. balls and bands and everything you need right there. Spry bands and Spry balls. I'd be, smart. I'd be selling them on my site, but I figure. <laughs> At least put the affiliate up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if they affiliate. Uh, yeah, I don't know if they do either. You might not. Someone probably does. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah okay. So is that where somebody should start with, with um, Spry bands and, and the balls? Yeah, there's a lot you can do. See, the thing about body weight workouts is there are a few moves that are way, way, way too difficult for most people to do. Like, like handstand push-ups? Oh, don't get me started on that. <laughs> like an anterior delt workout there instead of a shoulder workout. But um, because most people are, are looking at the floor, they're doing it wrong. They're not even getting their delts. Yeah, I think it's just because they're trying not to fall on their ass. So, Right. So That's like a that's, show off exercise. That's just one of those. Yeah, it's a fun one. Just though. like pistol squats, just like shrimp squats. I'm like, Good, I hate pistol squats. Pistol squats just are ridiculous for your knees. Don't do them. If you love okay. your knees, don't do pistol squats. They're stupid. Uh, having a knee issue. Really don't do them right so what like about, some, some things what like pull-ups are too hard for most people to do. 
Well, okay. So what if they just hang? Because I was taught to do that for a while. And I don't know if it was that or that I lost some weight, but now I can do pull-ups no problem. Sure. Let's start with I hanging. Mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. hang and then just contract the shoulder blades. Okay. Get, start just contracting. But the point is like, that's, I mean, pull-ups aren't where you start. You start right. strengthening everything else too, right? Okay. You do a lot of rows and, and things that you can do with a band. Okay. Or one really heavy set of dumbbells. So you, so you've got um, your, your whole workout plan for like beginner to intermediate to expert all levels. Yep. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Without now, biometrics, and that's super super important. Okay. Because most of the workouts that I've seen, like Beachbody and all of that, they use plyometrics to get the heart rate up and mm -hmm. make you feel like you've done a great workout. But if your connective <laughs> tissue is not ready for it. This is going to blow out your knee and blow really? out your lower okay. back. It's going to cause more problems than, than the benefit that you got from it. And so that's why I built mine because I was frustrated at seeing stuff like that. Yeah. And I was like, no, people need a safe way of working out because if you can't, if the workout that you're doing today is not what you would do when you're 80, you shouldn't be doing it. Really? Plain and simple. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to have to amp Just it up when I'm 80, I guess. Just because so, you can right now, because you're gonna you're gonna completely destroy those joints. I, I have seen, I have seen as I've gotten older that I'm starting to struggle with some things and, and little tiny nagging issues. Nothing, nothing serious. I did lose a toenail the other day. <laughs> I, I I ran an ultra marathon back in January, oh. and uh, I didn't complete it. I ran 25 miles up and down a mountain. I mean, I probably should have researched topography before I signed up for this thing. <laughs> but, but um, just 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 the other day, my toenail came off, so that's a first. Um, and then I've had the the IT band issue. So these these are the kind of things that happen when you start pushing yourself a little too much. And it's not well, that I don't know what I'm doing. It's it's that I've gone from that 20s where I could do whatever I wanted to now I'm in my early 30s and I'm starting to see some limitations. Okay, so the reason why that happened isn't because of age. It's because of the amount of time that you spent <laughs> doing the wrong thing. Yeah. Right. So you, also, didn't, yeah. you didn't realize it was the wrong thing in your twenties because nothing hurt, but then you do right. it long enough and you're like, Oh, I mean, your IT band didn't start giving you problems just yesterday. It's been building up over time. It did. Yeah. And yeah. Up because of muscle imbalances yeah. because of something that you were doing incorrectly or didn't pay attention to 10 years ago. Well, does the, that make the, sense? It does. I think the first trigger was I was running around a track that was way too small. Oh. And I think it was my outside knee that gave in. So sure. um, I think that's part of it. Because your foot was tilted. Yes. And then it was so tilted it was for like half of the state. Yeah, that's what I think it was too. The other thing I've realized is shoes wear out a lot faster than you would think. Yeah, they do. And uh, I just replaced my running shoes. Well, I'm still kind of new to running. Like I only really started a couple of years ago and I just replaced um, my, it's my second pair of replace now, but I, I didn't realize how flimsy and how weak they had become. It wasn't just the tread at the bottom, but like the actual like uh, shoe itself had gotten weaker. Yeah, the cushion oh, on the inside. You're, the tread yeah. at the bottom won't tell you how how much how worn your shoe is. Yeah, and but, and that was when my I started having these nagging injuries. It was because the shoe was getting worn out. As in, most people don't walk correctly, much less run correctly. I've so heard this. Yeah, running all running does is exacerbate <laughs> an issue that's already there. So well, then the more you do it, then the worse it's going to get. Yeah. There's a running store in town where it, like, some of these nicer, like local running stores, you can actually walk in front of them and they'll tell you like, what's wrong with the way you walk. I'm lucky that I don't walk wrong. <laughs> so. Yeah. A snail's pace used to, when they're, yeah. when the stores were around down here in Cali, they, they would do that for you, put you on a treadmill, analyze yeah. your gait, and then get you the right shoe for, for what you were doing. It's mm -hmm. pretty neat. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we were talking earlier. This is this was getting interesting. So we had to hit the record button. Um, we're talking about the current coronavirus issue with gyms and the fact that um, is it nationwide? I know in California and I'm in Tennessee and I know our gyms are shut down. But is there any gyms open right now? I don't believe so. No, I don't, I don't think there are. I they are. They're, they're probably empty. To close. Yeah. 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 So we were talking about. Um, you know, some of these smaller places are probably going to shut down, but some of them are doing a halfway decent job of trying to, um, not, not my favorite gym, by the way, but Planet Fitness has like a streaming service that um, I, I can commend them on that. That's a clever way to keep people going. 
Yeah. I mean, 24 hour fitness has, a, has an app where they have classes that are on there. So you can just play the class. I tried okay. that. I tried that in the first couple of weeks to do a yoga yeah. class and it's okay. Yeah. It's just, it's not a workout. <laughs> I've been I'm like, okay, I can do yoga, but I don't want to do it for the next I've, six weeks. Yeah. You, sometimes you miss that energy that you get like in the actual gym. But I mean, like right now it's, it's that or nothing for some people. And um, yeah. <laughs> you were giving me a hard time earlier because I, I am too independent and I like to do my own workouts, but I get kind of scatterbrained and distracted sometimes. And if I'm not following a long workout, I can, I can lose track. Well, and how do, how do you know that you're making progress when you're scatterbrained and just doing whatever comes to mind in the, in the yeah. moment? Yeah, and then I, I skip the ones. And, and the, yeah, yeah, exactly. I skip the workouts I don't want to do. <laughs> so, but, it, but if you had a coach, if you had a workout plan that you knew, okay, I've got to get through this because this is my, A, my accountability, but, but B, like, okay, so this is the order that I should do it in. Oh, do that exercise first, not that one. Do this one, then that one, and then a superset it with that one. When you, when you have all that laid out for you, it's so much easier to get through and complete. Yeah, and just, right? I'm getting anxiety just thinking about trying to like write down all the stuff that I do, so like just going with your course sounds easier, honestly. Sure, and then you have a yeah. record of it too. What did I do? How am I progressing? Am I getting stronger? Am I not? Because you'll see it, right? Uh If if 20 push-ups were too easy. Do 750 in one day? (laughs) Not my recommendation. Uh, Only 230 (laughs) left. I think I can do this no problem. You only have 730 left. Oh, 230 left. (laughs) Oh, 230. And it's going to be the last 230 that are going to be the hardest. They're they're getting hard. (laughs) I started out with doing 50 at a time. Now I'm doing like 20 to 25 at a time. Yeah, because you're fatiguing. The lactic acid is building up. And if you get to 750, I'll be impressed. I'll get there. I'll get there. I mean, I lost a toenail trying to run an ultra marathon. So. Okay. So what you're saying is you're stubborn. Yeah. I'll I'll give you a college (laughs) try. (laughs) All right. Good. I want to see this. It's funny. I used to not be so, I was always an athlete. I was always um, in shape, but like. As I've gotten older, and it definitely triggered me when I went through the divorce. I, I feel like I've got something to prove. And then once you start running these races and, and working out more, you start wanting to beat yourself. And, you know, it, you get to a point where you kind of paint yourself into a quarter and you're putting yourself out there a little a little too much. Um, these, these fitness trackers drive me nuts. I don't know. You probably have the same issue. Where Do you ever look down and, like, even if it's, like, a day where you're supposed to be resting and you see a number that's, like, too low, and it, does that yep. bother you? Constantly. I'm at 2000 right now, which is like usually what I have before the sun's up. And it's because I've been doing push-ups all day and I don't want to bike or run. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't like seeing low numbers on my, on my Apple watch. Drives me nuts. Yeah. Which it's, is part of my problem, right? Right. Right now I can't get my heart rate up high enough. Really? Even at home? Not, nah. You can't do, I don't know. I mean, you can, you can get, the, you need, you can get the bike, the stationary bike or the Peloton. Yeah, which would be far better for my knees than trying to yeah. run up and down hill. Yeah, yeah we were... Just some hills. Hills? You don't, you, don't, you, don't do, you don't have to do the, do the hills right now? Well, no, that's all I can do. Oh, okay. But, but even say, when I'm so. running, I'm at 165 to 170 heart rate. So I'm what do you do to get your heart rate up to like 180 or whatever? The gym? question no i'm just running up a hill that's all i can do but i can't do that for an hour yeah. well you need to get my driveway you should have bought a house with a really steep driveway <laughs> how that's long is your driveway is it a few miles no but it's long it's um when i go up and down it my my garmin triggers uh seven flights of stairs oh really so it's it's really steep it's like 45 degrees at some angles and it's uh God, i think it's about a quarter mile long so it's it's serious that's pretty good all right yeah that well times. i grew up in illinois so I, I wasn't used to running hills like that whole concept eluded me and then i started um i started running out here in tennessee and all these races i'm going to have hills so i've had to train for them and it's been an adjustment but now i'm getting there so um we were talking a little bit about um how to, how to stay healthy during this period of time, right? Yeah. Not just moving and working out, but gut health and and eating right and all those right. things. Yeah. 
that's going to be super important for a lot of people to help with their immunity because they need to move to stay healthy, but they need to man it. They need to make sure that their gut is healthy. Yeah, that's, that's something that's yeah. been kind of fascinating me. Um, Cause I never heard anything about gut health until maybe three or four years ago. Um, probably even more recent than that. I think I heard about it first on Joe Rogan when uh, Dr. Rhonda Patrick was on. So I know a little bit about it, but, but tell me more about gut health and, and how you can improve your gut health. And, um, well, I think most people have a pretty um, lousy yeah. microbiome in their gut. Most people have not paid attention to it, or they think that if they if they eat the active yogurt or whatever, that they're going yeah. to actually like improve it. I'm going, okay, you realize that that stuff doesn't actually really get into your gut, right? And we're only talking about one type of bacteria, even if it could. So okay. um, we have good and bad bacteria in our gut. You're not going to get rid of the bad bacteria, but you want the good bacteria to have an upper hand. Okay. And the problem is that sugar and processed carbs actually feeds the bad bacteria. So if you're feeding the bad bacteria, it gets the upper hand. And then it sends a signal to your brain that you're craving more sugar and you're craving carbs. So when you're sitting there watching, you know, binge watching Netflix and go, I want some popcorn. I want some potato chips. I want some cookies. That's, your, that's the bacteria in your gut telling you that you yeah. want that not because your body actually needs the calories or those particular types of calories, right? Right, it's so don't listen to your gut. <laughs> don't listen to your gut in that, way, in that instance, no, because it's signaling to your brain to have that craving. Right. Right, if it tells okay. you, if your gut some, somehow sends a signal that says, I'm craving ribs or a big fat steak, okay, go with it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I can go with that. Go with it, that's gonna be the good bacteria talking. Yeah, so, so the bacteria in our gut sends signals to our brains telling us what to crave. Okay. So yeah, I've, I've noticed this because mm -hmm. um, I started trying to eat some different things. And this is hard for me because most of the, um, the foods are strange, like uh, the goat or the yogurt, um, kimchi, pickled stuff, kombucha. Yeah. Like these are, No. I don't like those things. Well, I don't like those things either. I, I kind of like kombucha, but really I, the only reason I like it is because if I feel like I want a beer and I drink kombucha, somehow it kind of scratches the itch. So, <laughs> it's fermented. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's got like half percent of alcohol. But I've, yeah. I've noticed over time that like um, my gut is, is speaking differently. So I don't really crave um, like snack food. I don't crave sugar. I've cut sugar, not completely out of my diet, but I've heavily cut it down and I don't crave it as much since I got rid of it but you crave that, beer I do crave beer okay yeah. well that's the that's the bacteria you're talking that's the it may not be bacteria. craving cookies but it's craving beer I if it makes anything better I drink I tend to drink like the local craft beers over like the, the swill from the same, Budweiser same stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same stuff because if you're not if you're not craving like martinis then you know that it's it's the stuff in the beer Right, it's okay. the sugar in the beer that it's craving. It's the maltose and all of that. If I'm craving martinis, is that the different bacteria, or is that just mean I'm an alcoholic? <laughs> you just probably mean you're an alcoholic <laughs> <laughs> because alcohol doesn't actually turn into sugar. Okay, it turns into acetate, and then it becomes carbon dioxide and water. So I don't really know where that got started, but there's a whole lot of bro science and yeah. uh, information <laughs> yeah. out there. Yeah, I mean, okay. Here's, here's a really good example of what I mean. For the longest time, people actually thought that there was a fat burning training zone, heart rate zone, right? Yes, right. Manufacturers put it on their, on their equipment, on their treadmills, on their stuff. They put it on their equipment. It's completely bogus. One guy made it up, pulled the number out of his butt and said, 220 minus your age there. There's your training zone. It's not true. It's absolutely not true. And so I sat there and I went, okay, I've heard everybody talking about how alcohol just turns to sugar and it's just empty calories. So I opened up my biochem book and I cannot find a single pathway where alcohol becomes sugar. It goes to acetate. Okay. And then it goes to carbon dioxide and water. So alcohol is fine. Sugar. Like drinking whiskey is fine. 
Yeah. And the alcohol itself is not the issue. It's the other stuff in the alcohol or the drink. That's the issue. So yeah. all the other calories, like all the, all the, um, the hops and everything in the beer, the maltose, that's the issue because beer actually has sugar in it. Um, the wine actually has sugar in it, right? The, the regular liquors, if it's clearer, it has fewer impurities. If it has, if it, the browner it is, the more impurities it has. And so the more your body has to, the more your, your liver is going to have to work to filter those impurities out of your system. So like a clear whiskey is healthier than a, a barrel aged whiskey. Cause I, that's the only thing that makes the color, right? Mm -hmm. Just from the barrel. Yep. Yeah. So but there, but it's leaching something from that. The right? sugar in the barrels. I don't know that it's sugar, but I, but it's some something. type of impurity. Otherwise okay. it'd be clear. Huh. Right. That's interesting. I'm just thinking of Ron Swanson where he says that clear liquors for rich white women. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't would, drink a lot of clear liquors. I would call it for health conscious. Health conscious. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Clear liquors for health conscious people. All Although right. Kind of an oxymoron because we're talking about drinking, but well, you know. there's nothing wrong with that. I know my audience. What there's about drinking? There is <laughs> there's there's psychological a value to it. There's definitely a value to it, <laughs> especially right now. Um, to relax. Okay, so what about the uh, white claws, little like spritzer beers? Because those aren't beer. It's gonna be sugar. It's gotta be sugar. Mm -hmm. I, haven't, I haven't really drank many of them. I don't know, but it, it's malt liquor. It's malt liquor. Okay, yeah, so that's also sugar. Right? Beer. Yeah, maltose okay. is in it. Okay, so we kind of skimmed over a couple of things. One, one, let's go back to the the heart rate thing that you're talking about, where the guy said 220 minus your age. Mm -hmm. Is there no real, you know, zone to get in for burning yeah. fat? So no. you can burn fat at 120, just like you can at 200. It just takes longer. Yeah. yeah no. Here's the here's the deal. It it's going to depend on how much okay. sugar your body already has in it whether or not it's going to use that first. So if your body is chock full of glycogen, it's going to burn through the glycogen before it burns fat, no matter what. If you're in ketosis and your body doesn't have any glycogen, it's going to burn fat no matter what. Now here's the thing, each cell has mitochondria in it, right? Mm -hmm. And the amount of mitochondria differs from person to person and from red fibers to white fibers. You with me on the fibers part? I'm with you on the powerhouse of the cell, the mitochondria. I don't know okay. what red and white fibers are. Okay, I'll go back to that in a minute. Okay. Um, there is a particular amino acid that is the only shuttle that gets, um, that, that, that takes the um, fats, the fatty acids from inside the cell to inside the mitochondria, past the mitochondrial membrane. And it's L-carnitine. So if you don't have enough of it, or if you're not eating enough meat and you don't have and you're limited on how much L-carnitine you have, I don't care how high your heart, you're pushing your heart rate or how hard you're working, if you don't have enough, you're just going to be limited by how much fat you're going to burn based on how much L-carnitine you have. Is this bad news for vegans? Is there no other way to get it? Well, the vegans are skinny just because they're losing muscle mass. Yeah. Because they're not getting enough protein through their diet. So their body needs protein to be able to make hair and nails and things like that. So it's stealing it from their musculoskeletal system. Wow. All right. So l carnitine is only in meat? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's an amino acid. It's not okay. like, I'm not saying it's only red meat, but you need to uh -huh. eat meat. Your body need, otherwise your body's going to try to make enough of it, but it's not going to make a whole bunch of it based on what you wanting to burn fat. Right. At that point, when you're talking about going vegan, it's not, it's no longer about L-carnitine, right? That whole, yeah. that conversation is based on a normal person's diet. Somebody eating meat, protein, car, you know, um, carbs, veggies, things like that. If you're talking about going vegan, the reason why they're going to burn fat isn't because of L-carnitine. It's going to be because that's its only fuel source. Okay. Okay. And then once the fat is used up, then they're going to, then their body's going to start using um, its protein, the muscles okay. as a fuel source. So that's why they get super skinny over time and they lose strength and power because they don't, because their body is eating away at their own muscle. Yeah, so we got two different ends of the spectrum here. You got one where there's no sugar, no fat, and they can't burn through anything. So they're losing muscle mass. Then you got the other side where they're constantly eating sugar. Then they 
they run out of sugar, so they start craving more sugar, and they never get to the fat burning stage. And these are the people that get frustrated when they go to the gym, right? Because they're like, yep. I never lose weight. Yeah. But they, I, I think because they're replacing think, all the glycogen. Now, here's the other thing about glycogen: it's not just about getting into a, you know burning fat. Glycogen also stores three to seven grams of water per gram of glycogen. So that means for every gram of glycogen that you can, that your body stores based off of the calories that you've consumed, the carbs that you've consumed that have not been burned off that day, you're actually retaining three to seven times that amount inside your muscles and inside and in, in your liver. So that's another big reason why they're not losing weight. They never got a chance to burn through all that, but also they're not seeing the scale drop because there's so much water on their body. That's wild. It's a lot of interconnected, really complex mechanisms that doesn't come up with like a, well, just eat fewer calories and work out and, and you'll lose weight. No, you won't. Because then when we layer in hormones on top of it, if you don't have enough testosterone, you're not going to burn fat either. Okay, so I know I know for a fact that people like to hear about this stuff, and as much as I'd like to talk about it, I'm not an expert in it, so I haven't. How do people? How do you guys know that they have a testosterone issue? Everybody's testosterone declines after the age of like 25 to 30. You're, because your Challenge DHEA accepted. declines. Yeah, your DHEA declines. What's your DHEA? DHEA is a molecule that your body makes, but mm -hmm. it's a two-step precursor to testosterone. Okay. So when that declines, then you simply can't make enough testosterone because you don't have enough of the molecules that it makes it out of. Now, are there ways we can kind of like combat this? Sure. You can take a yeah. DHEA supplement. D I do. DHEA supplement? You, why would you take a DHEA supplement? So I can have enough testosterone for weightlifting? No, just as a woman, like you, everybody needs it. Women really, really notice a big benefit from it. Really? I think that's yep. like surprising. Like, I don't think women would expect to hear that. No, they don't think I need more testosterone. What they think <laughs> is, why, why is it, why am I struggling to, to lose weight over 40? How come after my kids, it seems like I can't get the baby weight off and I'm dieting and I'm doing all these things or I'm keto now and it's just not the same and it gets harder and harder and harder as time goes on. Is yeah, having because, kids dip your, uh, make your testosterone dip? Well, it shifts your hormones. It's just okay. that most people associate it with having kids when okay. it didn't have anything to do with the kids themselves or even the fact that your hormones were, you know, kind of out of whack during that period of time and while you were breastfeeding and everything afterward. It really, people associate it with that, but it's really the, just time declining their DHEA. Wow. Okay. So, so I'll give you a great example. After I had my little guy, um, he yeah. was about, it was about six months later and I had been doing everything right. I had been in a huge caloric deficit. I was working out as much as I could. I was running. Um, nothing was moving. My yeah. body was not dropping any of the baby weight at all. As soon as I took the right amount of DHEA, not just some, but I got the right amount man, I started dropping a quarter of an inch a week. Really? Which amounts to about two to two and a half pounds a week on me. Wow. Yeah. Because my body went, oh, now I can burn fat again. Thank you. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay. So for men, that's one of the first things I ask them. If you're over 30 and you're struggling with, with body fat composition, um, let's look at your testosterone first. And here's the thing, the AMA, right? The American Medical Association has these guidelines for what they say healthy testosterone or normal testosterone. Yeah. Is. And it's super low compared to what Insanely it was low. in your 20s. Insanely now, low. When they say normal. Go to your doctor. <laughs> do, when they say normal, this is actually, I think this is fairly well known in our circle. When they say normal, do they mean normal as in like what's healthy or do they mean like the mean as in the average? I think they're looking at the mean and the average. That's what I, I think too. I don't think they're trying to replace yes. men uh, testosterone levels back to where it was in their 20s. Yeah, and I really think it's, it should be doing. Frankly. There's no argument among my followers that there's plenty of, you know, soy boys or whatever you want to call them. These, these guys have gotten soft, you know. But it's, a real, but it's a real reason. Yeah. And, not, and, and the mentality, the way we think <clears> and the things that we say and our behavior come are so hormonally driven 
that no wonder they are. And it's not yeah. their fault. It's right. It's what happened naturally, but like, go get a supplement, start with DHEA. But for guys, I think they probably need to eventually get into testosterone, maybe not right away, but I, I'm a big fan of testosterone repl replacement therapy. Yeah. Yeah. There's, um, there's probably more people than you would think that are using it. Uh, Joe Rogan uses it, but he's she how old is he? 50 something. I mean, Good. at that age, why not? Sure, I'll probably use it at that I age. If you're over 50 and you're not, and you're not doing that. I yeah. don't know. I, I, I have no idea why you're not. Like, yeah. Do you not want energy? Do you not want to feel good? Do you not want to be strong and feel great? Exactly. Of course you do. And so for ladies, yeah. like, do you not want to have that energy? Do you not want to have the sex drive you used to have? Right? It's a big deal for relationships too. Yeah. Yeah. And those are getting tested so, right now, right? <laughs> for all the, yeah, right. So for all the guys that watch your podcasts, if your lady isn't into it, maybe slip her some DHEA and see how <laughs> energy level changes. Yes, I did say that. <laughs> Everything shifted. I mean, when energy level goes up, like your enjoyment for life goes up, your yeah. desire for sex goes up, like everything is better when your yeah. hormones are, are in the right balance. When your hormones are low, you're just going to feel depressed. You're going to yeah, feel yeah. lousy and think lousy. Yeah, it's okay, hard. I, I mean, I can understand that. I mean, if, if I go two weeks without working out, it, it throws off my hormones, right? Yep. I mean, like, I get cranky. Lift, lifting get weights yeah. does impact your hormones. And not testosterone per se, but your human growth hormone levels. Okay. So, yeah, a little bit of testosterone, but HGH is what's more impacted by, by weight training. And if you weight train while you're fasted, you get a little extra boost of, of HGH. So really? I highly recommend training fasted. Okay. See, I've, I've always, I've caught a lot of flack for this, but I've always worked out on an empty stomach and people think I'm nuts for that, but me too. Um, I don't, it just feels right to me. And, and if I eat too much, like I get that, I don't puke, but I get pukey. You know, my stomach feels a little easy. I, I wonder. I get know. a stitch in my side, but no, you're yeah. doing it right. And here's the thing. The, the fitness community for years has always been like, no, you got to eat before you work out. So that way you have energy. I'm like, what the hell do you think body fat is? If I'm trying to get leaner, why would I want to take, a, why would I want to give my body something yeah. to work with when I've already got plenty of it stored on me? Or All more the dude than bros. I want. All the dude bros telling you guys you got to carb up when they are at like what six percent body weight, but they're talking to the audience at thirty percent body weight. Right, I'm like right. they don't need carbs; they need yeah. they need a tape over their mouth. Exactly. Right? Yeah, that was when I started doing the long distance running. I was told that I had to start eating, and that took some adjusting. But you know, nah, there's a difference. Most people are going to go work out, and what they're going to do is they're going to run like maybe a mile, and they're going to mm -hmm. do a little bit of light lifting and nothing intense. That's mm -hmm. fine. You don't need a carb up for that, right? But if you're going to do, right. say, a half marathon, then yeah, go eat your bagel with peanut butter. Well, you know, when I used to train my, when I used to teach my spin classes, because I was spinning for an hour and a half, hour 45, super intense. Plus you showed up before the class <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to do extra, so, right? <laughs> right. All that period of time, I was in the 180 to 200 heart rate range. Yeah. Instead of carbing up for it in advance, I would bring uh, a bottle of, I'd have a bottle of water with some grape juice in it that's diluted. So I would replace the sugar that I needed when I finally got to that place where I needed the sugar. Really? Okay. Yeah. So that that way I wouldn't switch into using my muscle because I was lean already. So in order to continue to perform, just provide your body with what it needs at that moment. Don't go do it ahead. Don't go carb up the night before and then go store a bunch of glycogen and then go burn it off. Like why? I mean, I guess, but I, mean, I guess if you're going to do a marathon and you don't get a chance to drink water or drink sugar while you're doing it, but if you can. Yeah. But most people don't have that problem. Most people aren't running marathons. Well, most people carb up the wrong way too. So let's, 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 go. let's go into that. Cause I probably am. <laughs> what's, what's the right <laughs> way to carb up versus the wrong well, way? Uh, I wouldn't eat a bunch of processed carbs. I wouldn't do pasta. Okay. I do potatoes. Potatoes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, everyone says pasta all the time. I hear that all the time. Yeah. A lot of bro science. The problem is with pasta, now you're feeding the wrong bacteria in your gut. Yeah. Right? And so, and you're missing, and there's no nutritional value to pasta. Potatoes no, actually have loaded. nutritional value. They have nutrients that your body can use. So okay. why not eat the potato? Yeah. 
well, it's real. Right? Doesn't it make right? more right. sense? <laughs> yeah. And then you're not feeding the wrong bacteria in your gut because yeah. it's a vegetable. So the bacteria sees it differently, right? The good bacteria can, can use it. And so it takes that fiber from the potato and the good bacteria uses that to multiply. Okay. See, and then once you start eating this good bacteria, it makes you want to eat more of the good bacteria, right? Well, the good bacteria makes you want to eat more of the good foods. Yeah. Right. So it makes you want, right. So it makes you want to, it's like a self-fulfilling, um, what do you call it? It's a, it's a positive feedback. Up, upward spiraling, spiraling vortex. Upward yeah. spiraling vortex. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, so take the right probiotic though, right? So right probiotic. You know, um, they need, you need to take a probiotic that is shelf stable. That's DNA verified. So you know that what you're consuming actually is what you want to be consuming. Uh, you want one that um, can get through the acid in your in your stomach. It can actually get into the gut to repopulate that bacteria there. I think a lot of people probably have a lot of candida and um, yeast overgrowth in their gut from taking antibiotics. So here we are, here yeah. we are with this coronavirus, right? And people are going to be taking z packs and stuff like that like crazy. The problem is you're completely depleting all of the good bacteria in your gut when you do that. And you're not repopulating it with the stuff that with a good probiotic because most yeah. probiotics suck anyway. If you have to keep it in the refrigerator, it's not going to make it past your stomach. Yeah, that's that's actually one of my big fears. Is these these antibiotics people people drink them and then they what they do they pee them out into the water system. So now everyone's got them in them. Plus, it's in the food. Um, you know, God knows what else is in the water system. So I, I may be a little out in left field here on this one, but I think one of the big problems with uh, the testosterone is the women are drinking or women are taking birth control and then they're putting it into the water system. Right. Hmm. So you got these people that are in the cities that are drinking this more than people say in the country where they're more on wells or drinking bottled water. Right. Hmm. It makes you wonder. It's a theory I have. I haven't proven it. It, it does make me wonder. I'm going to start thinking about that. Like, well, where, how do they treat the water? Where do they get the water from? Does the estrogen drinking? get through it? Is that, yeah, and does is that the reason through. why the city seems to have the more effeminate type of man? You know, the soft chin journalist, as they like to say. No, I don't think it's from the know. drinking water. I, I'm sure. I'm not drinking it. <laughs> I'm take DHEA. So basically what you're doing is you're telling me that, that you're, we should only be drinking whiskey. Yeah, right? we, should, we should put whiskey in the water and DHEA apparently. Whiskey, vodka, and. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all down. Don't drink any more water, just, I mean, and not even coffee. Like, we can't go there with coffee either, right? Coffee's a hot button issue. I'm lucky I get to avoid that one. I don't know. The cold showers and the and the black coffee is such a big deal, so. I don't um, know who came up with that stuff. It's like. It's, it's oh. like the same as the guy that created the, uh, the, the heartburning zone thing, right? He caught something catchy, it caught wind, and he didn't do enough research oh. and it blew up. Oh, my, my second favorite, complete bullshit excuse me thing. <laughs> we can cuss on this cuss. alkaline water right yeah oh, don't get yeah. me started on the alkaline water oh well, hang on before we get started on that do you drink fiji or one of those like smart waters mm, no i get okay. the bottle from trader joe's yeah. right. now granted it's the it, it's the alkaline water at trader <laughs> joe's but i don't really care about the ph of the water i like it because it has a really thick bottle and i can keep refilling it over and you over worry and over about again. like the BPA uh -huh. leaching from the bottle though? Nope. You don't worry about that? I don't. So I got really nervous about that kind of stuff because I had a, um, I, I got into this weird like health kick where I started like looking into all the, um, all the, uh, what do you call it? Like deodorant and toothpaste and all that stuff because I started getting a rash one day and I couldn't figure out. It was on my, um, my armpit. So obviously it's deodorant. Mm. And I start researching and apparently they put aluminum, which is poison, in yeah. deodorant to make it like last longer. And yeah, and that's leaching into your skin. Yeah. So yeah. for whatever reason, um, for twenty eight years I was okay to drink or to um <laughs> drink to use regular deodorant and then all of a sudden one day it just I don't know, a switch flipped and I, I couldn't do it. But then I start like finding all these other things. So that's why I get nervous about the BPA and the well, estrogen figured, and the water. I one one bottle every couple of weeks probably isn't going to be enough to hurt me. I don't know. That hot California sun, it melts it. 
I mean, for the most part, my bottle doesn't sit in the sun. I just take it to the gym with me and, and back, and that's about yeah, it. These. It's on my counter. Yeah, save it's the heavy. environment. You're you're the Californian. I'm the redneck in Tennessee that's supposed to not care about the environment. Not big enough. What's this is huge? It's really thick. Oh, you mean like not enough water? It's um, enough water. Twenty five ounces. A, I drink a liter and a half during a workout. This is America. I don't know what those are. We use freedom units here. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is, that's that's a liter and a half, isn't it? What, sixteen funny. ounces is a liter, right? Sixteen. I don't know what a liter is. No, sixteen ounces. It well, it's, it's sixteen ounces. It's Thirty-two it's ounces is a liter, right? It's two cups. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. you're drinking forty-eight. 40 a liter. Let's just get two of them. <laughs> oh yeah, I'll just carry those around in my backpack. Oh, some people do. They that's what the the hole in the handle is for. Yeah, yeah. that's true. It's true. <laughs> it's, it's not a habit that I've switched over. I don't know. It's kind of, you know what? It, but... it seems stupid. It saves me a lot of money because like, I don't buy the bottle at the gas station anymore. I almost always have that on me. You know, you can do two of those. It'd be all right. Put one in your car. <laughs> they got those water refill stations everywhere where you can get the estrogen water if you want it. <laughs> estrogen water. <laughs> By the way, before That's... we get off the topic of hormones too far. Um, right on it. Fat, Fats. body fat has its own hormones that causes your body to retain it and not burn it. So the more okay. body fat that you have on your body, the harder it is to get rid of. Really? Yep. That's and so you, what you want to do is avoid getting fat and <laughs> stay that way. Like I think they know that. Well, um, yeah, but, my, my, but I, think, I think there's a lot of denial about that too. Do you know what I mean? I think people go like, yeah, oh, or like, I'll lose it later. Yeah, I'll lose it later. Exactly. Yeah. No, not necessarily, yeah. Sparky. You might not. Yeah, I think I think a lot of people just lose, or I think what happens to most people is they gain five to 10 pounds every Christmas and they don't quite lose it. And that five pounds, like when you're 20, it's like, oh, whatever, it's five pounds. But then you turn 30 and it's like, well, that was five pounds every year and all of a sudden I'm 50 pounds overweight and it sounds insane but turn 30 and go check out all your friends from high school and look who's 50 pounds heavier that's right and because your testosterone is is decreasing every year yeah it's getting harder and harder yeah that's true so yeah. testosterone helps you helps um, well, is DHEA the only thing you recommend? I mean, what about like fish oil? I've heard that one for a while. I used to take a little fish oil capsules for whatever reason. Fish oil is really good for your brain. What is it going to do for burning fat? No, nothing for burning fat. I thought boost your metabolism. Burning. I've heard that. Somewhere. Doesn't have anything to do with it. Okay, that's why I bring yeah. the expert. Not from what I mean. Somebody would have to sit there and show me the pathway yeah. to get me to buy into that one. But because I, your body has fatty acids, it's going to break them down, and yeah. it's. It's not going to come from fish oils. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Unless you have fish fat on you. You have fish fat. Are you part amphibian? Not amphibian. No, no you'd have to be part fish. <laughs> amphibian would be frog. <laughs> I don't think groupers are amphibians. <laughs> no. <laughs> you calling yourself a grouper? <laughs> grouper, groupie, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not a fish. Um, okay. So, yeah, so, no, so, but it's really good for your brain, though. It is. Okay. All right. So, hormones, fat hormones. Is that all the hormones? Those are, I mean, there's a, those are the our ones. body is full of a million hormones, but those are the big ones that are going to concern people losing body fat and things okay. like that. Yeah. What about, what's like the biggest mistakes people are making, like, especially like nutritionally, besides uh, sugar? Uh, buying into the idea that calories in, calories out is all that matters. It doesn't. So, the type of calories matter. The type of calories inside of the type of body matters. 100, does 100 calories of cupcake equal 100 calories of steak? No. It's not the same? Nope. Yeah. Because it, it's got the sugars and the fat and stuff, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think a big mistake yeah. people make is in believing that eating vegetables is like the calories in vegetables. There are almost no calories in vegetables, kids. We can't right. even, we can't break down the vegetables, right? right? Yeah. So yeah. they're they're empty. They're taking up space, which is good. Eat the veggies. Sorry, that's my son playing in the background. That's catchy. I get more of that. But um, I hope YouTube doesn't pull this video down now. <laughs> I know, we're having Budo in the background. <laughs> uh, and you, anyway, 
Um, what was I saying? So the vegetables, like you're not breaking down those cellulose cell walls anyway, but it's a great filler to keep you from overeating a bunch of potato chips or yeah. eating the cupcakes, right? Because if yeah. you're too full, you're too full. But when you're eating a bunch of clean food, you can eat massive volumes of veggies that are cooked in oil, Yeah. salmon, you know, like you can, if it doesn't have a lot of land animal fat, it's going to be very, very clean. It's going to be very difficult to overeat that stuff. You're going to be able to consume a lot of it without. Yeah. Whereas, like Pringles, I don't know what they put in it, but you can eat a Pringle and like your body wants 400 more of them. Like, I don't right. know what that is. That's yeah. the bad bacteria. Is that what that is? Mm -hmm. That's the bad bacteria, but it's also the the salt on your palate. The salt's addicting. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially if I go on drinking, and then like all of a sudden there's a plate of peanuts in front of me at the bar or whatever like those are in trouble oh the roast so when you wrote when they roast nuts it yeah. changes the fat it changes right, so the structure of the fat by roast is not as good as not as healthy as like the the what do you call it just natural peanuts raw raw, raw. Yeah. yeah if you like, eat if you eat roasted salted you'll con a consume a ton more but even if you consume yeah. the same amount <laughs> You know it's funny, they they put heart healthy on the on the cover of it, even though it is roasted. Right. So, um, oftentimes, what you're going to notice Colton. is they're is they're roasted in hydrogenated oil. Yeah. Hydrogenated oil is probably the worst thing for your heart that you can that you can consume. All, all those oils, right? I mean, not all. Like the, oil. the cheaper because oils, you're, right? You're you're adding an extra hydrogen atom to that oil. Okay. Right, and so it yeah. changes the way it the way it impacts and your body. And that stuff's in like almost everything in the aisles of the grocery store. It's in all the fast food stuff. Yeah, but a lot of the regular restaurants. Go Coconut oil is good. What about Go avocado oil? That one's good, right? Awesome. Yeah, it's Those expensive. Are really, really good man, for you. Good. Yeah, olive oil is good, although it doesn't stand up to heat very well. But avocado yeah. oil and coconut oil. So I used to cook my steak in butter, like. Um, crust it in a cast iron skillet and butter. And mm -hmm. I was like, why am I doing this? Let me put it in coconut oil. Really? A steak? Mm -hmm. Because you... coconut oil has MCTs, medium chain triglycerides. Those What's wrong with butter though? It's fantastic for your brain. Well, butter is, a le first of all, doesn't have a high smoke point. Yeah. So that's an issue, but it's a land animal fat. So land it's not an oil. It's got, it's a cell. It's got a membrane. It's got nucleus. It's all, so it's more readily recognizable to our bodies. Okay. Because another, we're eating the same type of fat that another land animal has, right? So that's why when we consume an oil or we eat a fish, why can we eat salmon all day long and it doesn't, and we don't seem to get fat from it. It doesn't seem to impact us at all. It doesn't it's just swimming all the time and swimming's healthy for you, right? Right. So, but because it's different, it's got a, it's a, it's got a different structure. Okay. So but when you eat a ribeye and you've got all that fat on it, your body goes, oh, another land animal, just like me. Okay. I know what to do with that. Right. And so it's more, it's easier for it to store it, but okay. oil, it doesn't recognize. So it's harder for it to store it and just goes. So for the most part, just flows right through you. You can pretty much consume as much oil as you want and not have any impact to your waistline at all. But you can't consume as much butter as you want and have, and have there be no impact unless you're like completely keto and you've gotten yourself only into ketosis and you consume no carbs. And then that statement is out the window. But and, then, if you're, and that's where you get those keto people that are eating the butter steaks. And right, they're like, no, no, eat all the fat you want. I don't know about you, but I get sick eating a bunch uh, of fat in a meal. Most people do. I don't know. I've never, I've never been one of those guys to go 100% into anything. It's so like I tell people I'm paleo, but I'm like maybe 80% paleo. Like I'll still eat, you know, junk here and there. It's good not to be 100% into any yeah. one extreme because our bodies weren't built that way. And keto has only been around for what? A short period of time in terms of our evolution. So has veganism. Yeah. And yeah, so... I we don't like have keto. enough data. We don't have yeah. enough data to know what that's gonna what that's gonna look like to our hearts, you know, 40, 50 years down the road. And then they're gonna look back and go, oh, well, maybe that wasn't the best idea. All we know right now is look, processed foods are really, really bad for us. Meat and potatoes, good. Meat and vegetables, good. Fish, good. Just try to 
limit all the shit that you put in your body. And right. like, right, we know smoking is bad. Yeah. There's, there's no health benefit to smoking, right? <laughs> Except <laughs> maybe smoking weed and, you know, but smoking <laughs> cigarettes, no. Sugar's out of that one too. That's also kind of new science. But there's no health benefit to sugar or to processed carbs. <laughs> Huh? I'm not on weed. That's that's still um, early. Well, I think the I think the benefit is CBD, and I think that um, yeah, yeah I, I take it. That that really does help a lot of people. The CBD part. Um, yeah, I am. Um, THC. I think if you have high anxiety or you need to calm down, then that's a good thing for you. Just like it is, yeah. with, just like alcohol is in that way. Yeah. As long as you're not consuming extra sugar, so there's a benefit to that, but. Yeah, it was, so many people, but, it's, not, it's not the alcohol, it's all the sugar they put in with their mixers and stuff. Right, yeah. but I can honestly say that the lungs don't like it. They don't like weed? It doesn't, I don't think it matters what you're smoking. I think that the lungs are not built to. Yeah, you well, know. you know, especially right now, like the coronavirus is affecting people that smoke worse. So I don't, I don't know how oh. weed fits it. I know um, there's probably plenty of people that are gonna blast me over this because I'm um, attacking their hobby. But it can't That's be good. Projection. <laughs> exactly. It can't be good though. No, I, I, and I don't know either. I don't, I don't think any of us does. And I, I don't think, think anyone does. I, I think I've been doing a halfway so decent job of not talking much about coronavirus on Twitter in general, just because I don't, I don't really know much about it. I'm not a med student. So it's way out of my league, and no one yeah. really knows. And I don't think that the, any of the information or data that we're getting is probably very accurate. I think we're going to oh, look back on China. Right. So yeah. it came out of China and we're relying on China to tell us what? Yeah. Exactly? yeah. Well, yeah. it's amazing how they stopped testing and suddenly there's, you know, no viruses over there. What, okay, the one so. thing I have seen is the EKGs <laughs> of normally healthy people tend to look more like they had um, the, the damage of having a heart attack after having coronavirus and recovering from it. Their heart looks like they had a heart attack. Yeah. So is that I do some of them or is that all of them? I can't speculate because I don't really know. What I do know is I was tagged in a in a post from that was talking there were some doctors talking and sharing information on on somebody's EKG and I went, "Oh my god, I would be really upset if I had that EKG." And it was a regular 37-year-old otherwise healthy man who got it and then their EKG looked like he had had a heart attack. So he'd had the damage of a heart attack even though he recovered. And so the only thing I will say about coronavirus is, yeah, the people that are dying are the ones that have underlying health conditions. Okay, but I think that what you're gonna find is after this is over and after they really figure out what the long-term damage was, even for healthy people that recovered and, and lived, I think that we're gonna see our health insurance and our life insurance companies, that they're going to start asking that question. Did you ever test positive for the coronavirus? Did you ever have this? And then there were, those people are going to get rated as a result of it. Mark my words. So, because long-term effects, it's going to impact their morbidity. Having coronavirus will be like being a smoker, where they're going to ding you and you're going to pay more. Or like having had a heart attack in your 30s or 40s. Oh, that's scary. I hadn't heard the heart attack thing. I had heard that... Um, their like lung capacity wasn't quite as good. People were struggling to um, breathe as well afterwards. Right, they have scar tissue, a honeycomb Thank type you. of lung. Yeah. yeah. So they're, they're having heart and lung long-term, um, long-term reduction, long-term issues. Even though they recovered just fine, doesn't mean they're ever going to be the same again. So, so I, I, I think I know how most Americans work and what they're going to do if they understand that. If they come to find out that they can get dinged on their insurance and have to pay more money, they're not going to go to the doctor. They're going to fight it off at home so they can lie about it. Think about yeah. all the people that already, say, lie about smoking or drinking. You know, well, how many people go to the doctor and have a physical and they say, how much do you drink? Oh, you know, just one or two. And then three days later at the bar drinking 12 White Claws. Right. Well, absolutely. And, and I'm not saying that it's wrong for them to, you know, not go to the doctor and not own you know, go if you need to be on a ventilator, go if you're really, really sick. I mean, that's what it is. But if you're generally healthy and you can kick it at home, 
I would say, yeah, don't get tested. And I'm probably going to get blasted a lot for saying that from your viewers, but, no, not. but financially, resilient. If, if it's in your medical records, it will work against you. Something to think about. Yeah. So. I think that's something for a lot of people to think about just in terms of what they put in their mouth on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, I'm trying, I try to look at things with like a silver lining. Not always. I can be pessimistic at times, but I try to. <laughs> so I'm seeing some benefits from this thing. I think people are learning, one, how to wash their hands, which is frightening. Um, two, they're trying to eat and act a little bit more healthy. Uh, they're practicing some of these things that they should have been doing in the first place, like the whole, you know, maybe you don't touch everything. Drives me nuts. Stop touching your face. Stop I'm bad at that, but I'm working on it. But I don't touch other stuff. And I'm pretty good about, this is my favorite piece of advice I've gotten about the touching your face one, because it's pragmatic. They said, whenever you're in public and you see something you want to touch, like to open a door, use your non-dominant hand. So if you're right-handed, use your left hand. And then when you like subconsciously just scratch your nose, you're going to do it with your dominant hand. Yeah, that's true. Go. You know what? Having had acne for so long, I learned how to not, I learned how to stop touching my face. Really? How to not hold my phone up to my face. I always right? thought it was because so you were on TV. If I have to scratch something, I go like, I use like the back of my hand, my knuckle, yeah. anything other than my hand. Yeah. I just do. I, tr I trained myself to do that. It's, but, it's yeah. hard. And all the kids are out there like touching and licking everything. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, don't oh, fix that one. My don't. kids, I'm like, okay, it's not that hard. Stop touching your face. I can't see all the blackheads on your nose. Stop touching your face. You know, is, that, is there like a really direct link just to touching your face? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, because okay, so here's what a dermatologist told me. He said we have mites and bacteria on our hands and on our faces. Hang on, so, that, that alone's got me to stop touching my face. Yep. So you have. Little so mini spiders were over my hands. This puts mites and yeast and bacteria on your skin, and then your skin reacts to it and I mean, creates acne. I know sleep it's gross. at night knowing all these weird things. <laughs> I drink. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I do, but that's not how I sleep at night with all this stuff. I CBD stop oil. touching my face, and guess what? I don't get sick. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Not touching your face. Wash your hands occasionally, eat healthy, yeah. and keep the weight off. You don't get sick. Right. Be, it's not that hard. That, that being said, I got, I got incredibly sick. Um, New Year's Day, for um, 10 days, I lost 11 pounds. Wow. And, um, Good coronavirus. I might have. I honestly think I did. It was a lot of the same symptoms. And, um, and then you went and ran a super marathon? It was like two weeks later. Oh. So. Okay. <laughs> That was an ultra, ultra marathon. You know what? I'm going to say I would have ran it if the Chinese didn't sabotage my race. So I would have been able to finish it. I got close. I ran 25 miles of it. Okay. Um, and it was a 31 mile race. But anyway, I, I mean, I never get sick. Like, almost never. And I was like bedridden for days. I was achy. I was coughing. That, that harsh cough they're talking about. And, and then you get a headache. And then every time you cough, you get the headache from that. And mm. It was rough. Sounds so. awful. Yeah, but you know, I think I'm over it now. So. Maybe we should just call it the zombie virus. It feels a little like the. I don't know. Did it's you just... feel like The Walking Dead and you suddenly crave toilet paper? <laughs> Why is everybody buying up toilet paper? <laughs> that just shows how bad our diets are. I super didn't get that when I was like, okay, wait, so let's think this one through logically. So I've now hoarded all of the toilet paper I could possibly ever want. Right? For how many years? And yet, so if there's a big apocalypse, I'm going to be the last one standing and I'm going to need toilet paper. Is that really what my, what I'm going to be concerned about? I'm just waiting for that one family where the kid goes out and TP somebody's house and they'll be like, wow, way to flex in all of us, you rich asshole. Right. This guy, exactly. got so much toilet they're paper. They're like pulling it down like, well, we needed this anyway. Thanks. <laughs> I don't know. When I couldn't get toilet paper, I was like, well, I got baby wipes, so... Yeah, but you can't flush those, right? What's one wipe going to do? If you're going to steal all the toilet paper out from underneath me, then you get to deal with the reclamation plan. <laughs> I hope you got a blender. <laughs> <laughs> now, one, one wipe doesn't, doesn't clog up the toilet. One wipe won't. I think toilet paper does a bigger job than that does. Yeah, well, I've been kind of blessed. 
I'm in Tennessee, so I get to watch everybody else freak out. And then two <laughs> weeks later, it happens here because it just it's just slower here. So when coronavirus hit California, I'm like, well, I don't see why it's going to stop at the border. So I went out and kind of stocked up and bought a bunch of chunk right? Uh-huh. Um, and I loaded up a grocery cart full of all this food. And I got one case of toilet paper because I didn't think people were insane. And people were kind of looking at me like I was nuts. But I got a big family. It's not that unusual for me to buy that much food. Then I, everyone starts buying this toilet paper up. I'm like, what? Why? Why is this what we have to buy? I just A lot of this stuff doesn't make any sense, you know? I don't think they were using their noggin. Like, you're talking about storing something that has a bigger volume than the food that you need in order to survive. Like, if I had, if you had to, you could go shit in the woods without toilet paper, right? How are you going to better. live without food? I just, like... Uh, I'm very conservative with stuff, especially when like it might be a shortage. So I just take a shower afterwards and suddenly I don't really even need toilet paper. Nope. Right? It's, like, it's what funny. We- it's like I'm not I'm not, like I make fun of all the Europeans. I'm like, I'm not getting your faggy little bidets, those are stupid. But the shower idea is like, eh. But you know what? If there was um I mean like if there was something that you really should stock up on, I would say it'd probably be cigarettes and alcohol. Even if you don't smoke. Like yeah. that would be something that you could trade for I, something else. I completely agree That's with you on that because they're small, right? So I had the same thought, but um, I used to smoke and I, I don't trust myself to not smoke if it's there. Like I, I won't, but like if I get drunk one night, I might want one. But I did do the same thing with the alcohol. I found, um, I think it was Evan Williams, they got the little like $10 bottles you can get. So I bought a few of those. That's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Well, if things and, really got bad, I think that's our currency. And, and that was my thought. I'm like, I could trade this for something else that I didn't think of that I might need, and it only cost me 10 bucks. And worst case scenario, I just drink it. Right. <laughs> Buy what you like, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> more, more likely what's going to happen is one of my friends is going to be like, hey, liquor stores are all out of alcohol. Like, do you want something? I got a bottle. Right. Then, exactly. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. That's, hey, that's great. Great. It's, um, it's just weird. Everyone's like, either it's going to be back to completely normal, like immediately, or it's going to be Mad Max. It's like, well, it's probably going to be somewhere in the middle where it's like, everything's fine. We can get Chipotle. The problem is you can't get toilet paper. So, <laughs> <laughs> right. And you can't get any, you can't get any beer because those plants got shut down. But yeah, so here's weird. what really pissed me off though. I go to Trader Joe's to go get some vodka. And I'm like, where'd all the vodka go? Like, there's tons of wine. There's tons of tequila. The, or, because some ass hat put it online. That, oh, you can use vodka to make hand sanitizer. I don't online. think you can, though. No. First of all, it's 40% alcohol. Right. And hand you sanitizer need a- is 60. And why would you want to waste good vodka? Thank you. Washing your hands. Just, I mean, like, if you're going to, if you need something, I don't know, pour white vinegar on your hands. That's going to be more effective <laughs> yeah. than using vodka. You know what? I've never bought a bottle of hand sanitizer in my life, and I'm not starting now. Me neither. It's it's not good for you. It it yeah. ruins the skin on the back of your hands. It, completely it takes away all the good out. bacteria from your hands, right? Yep. It completely yeah. dries out your skin, and then you go putting on lotions that have parabens and everything. It's like, why would you just not do that to begin with? Wash yeah. your little hands, and then don't touch your face. Like, touch everything else in the world. Just stop touching your face, and you're going to be fine. And, and pretty much- You should be sucking on soap, right? <laughs> Why are you getting oh, my God, me? right? And there was no run on soap. Like there, I, I soap panicked one day. I was like, I didn't, I didn't buy soap. I didn't even think about soap. I'm like, I don't know how much we have. I went to the store, and there's like a bunch of it. I'm like, eh, it's fine. See? It's so fine. I bought two. Just wash stuff. Yeah. I mean, if they had said that it's only alcohol that could kill it, you know what else has not been selling out, like, at all? Bleach. Which is amazing. I, I, I was stunned. I bought, like, ten bottles of that shit because it's, like, two bucks. Like, every time I go, I just buy a couple. You're and like, then, this kills everything. Now I'm like, I, I guess I'll just put this away forever. I've right. got bleach for the next couple years. You could it and, and use that as your hand sanitizer. Yeah. And just it off. People, yeah. Are not, people are not prepared. They don't know what to do. And now they're like... I knew it was getting like crazy when people started asking like gun questions. Like, hey, I heard there's like a, a gun waiting period. I'm like, all right, calm down. First off, like, right. we're fine. Like, first of all, if you if you don't already own one, you shouldn't go get one. Yeah, right? probably right. It's not your moment, kiddo. <laughs> right? You don't know how to shoot one, and what are you gonna do? Oh, that's good. Somebody's gonna go blow their face off. <laughs> Seriously, it's gonna be great. It's yeah. nuts. I think people are overreacting. 
They I are know. overreacting, and you can look at the markets and see that. Yes. Yeah. It's We've insane. never seen ten percent swings up and down in a single day, and then back, <laughs> and then back up, and then back down. It's like, okay, I'm getting woozy. Can you guys stop acting like such idiots for a second and just? I mean, I see a lot of people saying like, well, I'm pulling my money out of my 401k. All right. Well, that's a dumb idea, but okay. That scares the hell out of me. Yeah. Talk to a financial advisor, but like you don't want to pull all your money out of the 401k after it happened. It's probably the time to load up. Like it, Exactly. Take the cash that you've been sitting in the bank, dump that in right now, and yeah. then watch it go back up. But like lock in your losses. What a fantastic idea. Well, most people that are listening to this advice what they really need to do is get somebody that's more emotionally sound to do it. Cause it's not necessarily about the intelligence. Like you don't need a brain to trade, you need a stomach. Right. You need so, somebody with patience. that's not emotionally invested in your own wealth. I couldn't figure out the markets either until it got to me. Cause I've got a little E-Trade account that I play with and I couldn't figure out why like say gold was going down, even though like instability is going up. Mm -hmm. And then I had a pretty sizable oil position that I had uh -huh. that was already going against me. And the margin, so I had to put 25% margin down on this thing, right? So if it's, you know, $4,000, I had to put down 1000 bucks on it. Overnight, it goes to 100%. So suddenly, I got to pay for the whole thing overnight. And the market's going down. So I'm like, oh, everyone's running out of cash. And they're selling good positions to pay for the losing positions. Because that's what I had to do. And it, it took me about a week to kind of like rebalance shit. Not because I didn't know what to do, but I was just getting margin. Yeah. I didn't have the cash and I was like having to sell out of stuff. I'm like, do I get out of my Bitcoin? I'm like, no, that's probably going to go up too. I should leave that, <laughs> you know, and it, it gets to this yeah. weird position where you're trying, and that's what people are doing when they're panic selling to yes. on the losing positions. They're panic selling <laughs> because they, they think that the market's going to fall through the floor. Okay. First of all, it's not going to go to zero. No. I'd be, I'd be surprised if it went past 17, honestly, because that would be a 50% drop. Um, yeah, almost. Yeah. So I, I don't know. It, it could. Um, it, it, there are some things could. that scare me though. Like, uh, there's, there's, I heard that 30, I didn't hear it. CNBC said that 30,000 restaurants have already said they're going to close and never reopen again. Hmm. And if this goes into May, another 120,000 probably will do the same. Okay. Obviously you know, not the big chains. You know what? I don't know. Like in my town, it, it probably is most of the, the, the little chains, but I'll bet you, um, Places like Subway, they're not really Subway, they're franchises. So it is a little mom and pop place. But right. So in my town, the little places are getting kind of supported. And then like Logan's Roadhouse is empty every day. So people are like, well, we don't care about them. So I think this places like the Cheesecake Factory, you know, when they start saying they're not going to pay their rent, all I hear is their balance sheet's weak. Yep. Um, well, there's not a lot of profit in restaurants anyway. No. They get and most of it from liquor sales. Yeah, and they can't do that right now. Oh, they, I think so, they can sell beer. Some of them can. Their margins are so right low now. that I'm not surprised. But I would be surprised <laughs> if they never did if they never reopened again. Cause it's like, well, I could see why you close it for for a little bit, but you're gonna go find something else to do, and you're probably gonna go back into the restaurant business because that's what you know. I think so, the world will survive without Applebee's and Red Lobster because their days are probably numbered. <laughs> I'm fine without Red Lobster. Yeah. I was nervous until I found out you can still make the biscuits. I found out how to make them. So Serious? I'll be all right. <laughs> Don't be eating that stuff. Okay, one biscuit. <laughs> one biscuit. I, but the problem is when I, you make them at home, you can't have one biscuit. Now you have to oh, finish yeah, them all. Them. Okay, freeze See, them. I can't remember the... <laughs> freeze them. I can't remember. I can, it's not the same. When you, I have arguments all the time in this house. When I freeze something, it's not as good when I unfreeze it. So, like, Get over no it. one freezes steaks in my house. Okay. It's not okay. Oh. Fair enough on the meat part, but you yes. can freeze, you could freeze biscuits I've and, never then tried them. Out I, and then and then pop them out and then pop them out. I can't remember the last time I had a red lobster biscuit. <laughs> okay. Think about cookies. They sell cookies in the in the frozen jugs, right? The tubs. Cookies are but, perfect coming out of the freezer. The little like metal tin whatever. things? Yeah, right? Kids sell them for Did your mom never make cookies? No, my mom made lots of cookies. I yeah, made but those. Those are better. Absolutely. Yeah. So so I don't really. I'm not a sweet tooth guy. I don't really eat a lot of cookies and stuff. I don't either. But my daughter loves cookies, so they're my kids are super addicted to them. I I do like Oreos. Not my fault. Not my fault. I, Their father's got a sugar addiction. No, I get. It. I I have a problem with Oreos. I I don't allow them in my house. 
because I will eat all of them. And um, <laughs> my girlfriend got me like a, a big package of Oreos one day. Uh, I think it was for Valentine's Day or something. And you were like, and, you hate me? You're trying to give me diabetes? <laughs> well, I, I, I told her, I'm like, I can't have these. I'm going to eat them all. And she's like, whatever. And two days later, they're gone. She's like, what would you do with them? I'm like, I gave a couple of them to the kids, but most of those were eaten by me. I'm not going to lie. And she's like, <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm like, I told you I have a problem. They're, they're addicting. They're, they're like, scientifically, it's as, as addicting as cocaine. It's, it, you want to talk about that for a second? Yes. Explain that Sugar? to me. I understand it, but I don't know it sugar there's there's certain receptors in our brain sugar yes. binds to the same neuro neuro um receptors that opioids do really yeah so people that are craving their next fix are like me craving another oreo pretty much i can understand that now yeah because you're getting that same reaction from sugar that you are from opioids oh, that's crazy so, yeah, the problem is that sugar only causes diabetes, and it's like it's such a long-term effect, right? Yeah. So start pounding oxycodone the way you start pound the, the way you pound Oreos and see how that works for you. I I think this nation has a big problem. People in general, not just America. People in general have a problem with like um, effects that take too long for them to see. You know, yep. like you said, yeah, the sugar it takes viral. decades. And then the same thing with the gym. Like you can't go to the gym and see results in three weeks. So people get frustrated. Yeah. Man, if you stick it out for like, what, six to eight weeks, start seeing results, I think. I wonder if that's going to be a nice benefit of resetting our mentality on expectations from having this whole thing happen to the world. Well, I think, nice I think it's going to be a divide. I think we're going to see like a split where some people got better and some people got worse. So you're going to have some people that double down on the junk food, laying around watching Netflix. They're going to tell you all about Tiger King, which it's worth a watch. It's pretty good. And then you're going to have the other people that were like, you know, oh, I wanted to start this side income thing that I was going to do, but I never had time. And now they're like, well, I guess now I do. Or now I'm going to start running more. I'm going to start lifting more. And they're going to double down on that. But I don't think there's much middle ground. Right, like me being able to train people. Like, if you want unlimited access to me, I'm going to give you a huge discount because I have the time. COVID-19. do it. Why is it? Oh, that's the name of the virus. That's right. I was like, why 19? Is it 20? <laughs> because I was like, we'll just call it that one for the first one, and then we'll do 75 for, for if yeah, you want it's... to me all the time to, ta to ask questions. So you are available to ask any of those questions that we didn't cover in this video. Uh, yeah. But then you also have like just the regular video where if you think you can handle it. Then yeah, just... so I decided to cut my rates for everybody that was either struggling financially or just needed yeah. a good reason to, to get started on their own home workout. And so I cut it down from my normal price down to only $19 a month for that one. If you don't need to talk to me, you just needed a workout, $19 is a great great, great price for a personalized workout. Yeah. And then you get to interact with the software and it'll constantly change for you, constantly progress. And, um, and, but if you're somebody that's like, okay, I don't know if my hormones are messed up. I don't know if I'm eating right. I have a bunch of questions. I'm still a little confused. Then you can actually get access to me all 24 seven for only $75. 24 seven. Well, I mean, within reason, if I don't text you back at 2 a.m., it's because I'm asleep, but no, I'm I, not going to limit it to like, okay, you can only text me three texts a day, so they better awesome. be good ones. I'm just going to, I'll be available. You'll respond and you can text anytime. I will respond, but if, if it's some asshat thinking that for 75 bucks, he's going to get to, you know, start sexting me, then no, it will not be <laughs> <laughs> it is priceless. <laughs> it is not so, happening. But imagine like, you know, taking these an extra month or two or however long we have and actually like getting in shape and you come back to the office, you come back to school or whatever, and like you're back in shape. Like you can actually kind yeah. of stun people. It's like, like our summer vacation, but even even as an adult, we get one. Exactly. And so I wanted to price this so that like for the cost of what one personal training session would be in the gym, you can have me for an entire month. It's awesome. And if it works really well, then maybe I'll keep it that way for a while. Yeah, I think it's smart. It happens. You know? Yeah, I, so, I think it's a lot of things are changing. There's a reset in prices and the value of money and all that stuff. So who knows what things are going to be worth. 
True. Well, I didn't want money to get in the way of people being able to, to use this time to stay healthy or get healthy. So even though some people lost their jobs, I figure you might be able to scrape together 19 bucks. I like that idea. Netflix is 15. Yeah, so. exactly. No, that's, that's why I priced my first ebook so cheap. I'm like, I don't want anyone to be like, I can't afford it. I'm like, come on. Like, no barrier to entry. Just, just get started, all right? I'll, I'll yeah. bump the price up for other things later. <laughs> they can download my book on Kindle for like, I think two bucks or something like yeah. that. Yeah. And have that as that's a reference to have our recording. Because that book doesn't have all the extra like, micro biome stuff that I know, um, but they can get that, uh, they can get the probiotic on my website. I did. So the name of your book first. It. It's Megaspore. Megaspore, one word? Yeah. There you go. Awesome. I'll even send it, send you a picture of it so people can go get that. And that's a good, that's a really good probiotic. It's the one I personally use. I give it okay. to my kids. So it's, it's a big contributor to my overall. Oh, Megaspor, Megaspor is a probiotic. Mm -hmm. That's so the what's, probiotic. what's the name of your book that you said? Oh, my book. That's yeah. the girlfriend's guide to fitness and fat loss. It's only for girls. Nope. Awesome. And don't you like how that is? It's like, it's the girlfriend's guide. I'm the girlfriend. Oh. <laughs> giving and it's my guide, right? I'm with you. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So they can get that. They can, you can go get that on Amazon or you can get it from, I think I have it on my website too. I should probably go check. Yeah, she'll do that. <laughs> I would probably check. <laughs> I'll, I'll send it to you. Didn't I send you a copy? Yeah, I read it. See? Okay. Yeah, there I read things. People act like I don't. It just takes me a while to get to it sometimes. You should put it on Gumroad. Have you put it on Gumroad yet? No, maybe you can tell me how to do that. I can do that. You get better cut. Because Amazon takes a lot of money from writers, so. Oh yeah, they take yeah. all of it. It's... Yeah, if you want to make your authors happy, buy their stuff on Gumroad, but review it on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you want. What a smart idea! Tell you what, uh -huh. um, I'll, if you can help me put it up there, then whatever you what, whatever um, however many copies of my book that you sell, then you'll get a big cut of it. How about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a pretty good cut on Gumroad. The, uh, the standard's 50%. Cool. Well, you can have 50% of that. But it works because 50% of what you get on Gumroad is about what you would get on Amazon. Cool. So, so and, and the other the other guy's getting, you know, his 50% for marketing it for you. So. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So it makes sense. It's a good we program. We didn't talk about my meal plan or any of that stuff. And but. your meal plan. <sighs> you know. Yeah. As scatterbrained as you probably think I am, I actually have like a whole list of questions. I didn't even look at it, but your <laughs> meal plan was on there. Oh yeah. I asked um, every question on here except for the meal plan. My meal plan is. Let's talk about the meal plan. The thing about the thing about my meal plan that I, is different is it's not meal prepping. Mm -hmm. I don't like the idea of making of of anticipating what I'm going to want to eat on Friday on Sunday. I don't want to eat the same thing every single day. I don't want to weigh my food. I don't want to portion it out. I want to eat what I want to eat every set, every day. And I want to eat it until I'm full, until I don't want any more. And so my meal plan is based off of my recipes that I've created. I have in there a grocery list. This is what you need to get at the store. These, these are all the dips and sauces and stuff to make. And it's minimal skill set, minimal time, minimal cleanup minimal prep time. So there awesome. almost everything is 15 minutes or less of actual cook time. One, two pans max. So one pan and you really don't have to know how to cook very well. Like you just, it, but it's super good flavorful food and it all fits into your macros so that you can pretty much eat as much of it as you want. Yeah, I was impressed. I mean, it looks like delicious. So I, I gotta try out some of those meals. <laughs> it, it totally is delicious. And I can it, definitely cook them. And it, yeah. and it's super easy, right? Yeah, it's nothing, super easy. nothing looks like it's going to be really hard on there, yeah. but it's going to be really yeah. yummy and it's going to fill yeah. you up and you're going to feel, you're going to feel like you're eating normal food and not meal prepping and not yes. trying to do this fitness thing. Because once I, I think that psychologically, once you get into that type of hamster wheel, you start to feel like you, I know you start <laughs> to feel like, like you're depriving yourself. Yeah. And once you feel like you can't have whatever you want or as much of it as you want, 
now you feel like you're on a diet and people like diets about as much as they like budgets. And as soon as you start thinking about all, as soon as you do that, you start thinking about all the stuff that you can't have. And then you become more and more mentally obsessed with what you can't have and poof, you're off of it in a heartbeat. So in order to make a lifestyle change, we have to know that I can have M&Ms if I want to. Right now I could. I don't want to. Yeah, that's funny. I need to get in my protein though, right? So let me go eat all that stuff first. And then if there's room left over, then I'll go eat that stuff. And then- suddenly you realize that you don't actually crave it anymore and yeah. you and it doesn't hold any value for you i can make a i made an i have an apple pie sitting in my fridge my son wanted me to make it so i made it for him on friday just because i wanted to show him how to make a crust and how to make an apple apple pie and uh, i made him do all the peeling of the apples for me um but it's still sitting in there and i was going to send it you know to his dad's with him wow. to, to finish it i haven't touched it I took one bite to see how the crust turned out and see how everything turned out, but I haven't made an apple pie in over 10 years and it was delicious. But it's sitting in there because I don't want it. That's impressive. I'd rather eat, well, I'd rather eat chips, but I'm not going to eat I don't, those. I don't think I can do that with apple pie, but I think there's a key lemon pie in my fridge right now that, eh, whatever. I mean, if it doesn't turn you on, but I mean, like, I like apple pie. I like eating cookies, but I just won't eat them. You know, it's funny. I, um, I bought some mint chocolate chip ice cream the other day. And uh, this is back when like the food shortage was happening. I'm like, oh, what if the kids want ice cream? That'll cheer them up when things are bad, right? Well, I made uh-huh. the mistake of getting ice cream that I like. So Whoops. I've eaten it a little bit more than I normally because I don't, I don't really eat ice cream. Yeah. But when did they start making mint chocolate chip ice cream white instead of green? I don't know. I thought that it's, was it's, weird. It's right? been like, every time I look at it, I'm like, I don't want to eat it anymore. I guess the green was just a food coloring. I want the food. I'm going to start putting it back in there, I guess. Right? Like to make it look minty because mint is green. Yeah, right. (laughs) It tastes exactly the same. I look at it, I'm like, every time I just like kind of sigh, I'm like, it's not. I guess because mint extract doesn't have any color to it. So there's there's a mint extract shortage in the world, maybe. I don't know. You know what? The Halo Top ice cream is actually pretty good. So instead of eating that stuff, get one of those. What's it called? Halo Top. Halo Top. Yeah, you can get them at Target. They probably really? have it at Walmart, but um, Trader Joe's even has their version of it. Cookies huh. and cream. What about it. It's frozen it's yogurt? Okay. Better. It's going to have way more sugar. Really? I'm yeah. sure that's better than ice cream. No. Because it's the sugar that you care about more than the fat, but certainly you want the fat and sugar at the same time. I mean, yeah. like that's just asking for heart disease. I, I think there's one takeaway from here besides taking your awesome physical training course or um what do you call it a course no it's just it's just it, it's my one. software so my it's personal software. Training. right mm-hmm. beyond that just sugar get that out of your diet as much as you can i mean most people are drinking like ungodly amounts of sugar and the weird thing is i used to have these energy drinks that i would drink every day and i found out they had a sugar-free version but um i have a, a bunch of the sugar ones now and I, I can't drink them they yeah. don't taste right you know, good. so yeah, it's not good for yeah. you. And if there's one thing I would say that the Americans need to eliminate, it's sugar. Yeah, and it's and it's hidden. You know, it's in weird things like bread. Like, who would have thought a hamburger bun would have sugar in it? But it does. Well, they use the sugar yeah. to activate the yeast. Oh, I see. Yeah, but then you have sweet Hawaiian rolls that actually add it in to make it taste yeah. sweeter. And you yeah. can tell. <laughs> Those yeah. that you like. And they're delicious. I mean, yeah, I won't yeah, yeah. take it away from you, but like eat it at Christmas. <laughs> don't, don't buy it the rest of the time, you know? Yeah. I'm not saying don't eat all, any of that stuff ever. I'm just saying make it worth it. You know, have your chocolate like cake that. twice a year instead of once a week. And the whole yeah. idea of cheat days is nothing more than you just undoing everything that you spent the entire week sacrificing for. Yeah. So. Yeah. I don't care whether you're keto and doing cheat days or whatever, just, I mean, if you feel like you have to save it for an entire day, then you're already on the wrong track with your diet. Yeah. I think cheat days are more for the guy that's already lost the weight or a girl and gotten like way in shape, like the rock, you know, Dwayne Johnson, like he has like massive cheat days, but every day he's like doing these incredible workouts, like twice a day, I think. So does he actually do cheat days? You got to look up his Instagram. It's incredible. He will eat like, 45 rolls of sushi in like one like 45 pieces of sushi all in one sitting 
or like two pizzas and cheese sticks. It's, it's insane. It's, it's absolutely okay. incredible. But he, but for the most part, his cheat days are like somewhat healthy. He's like they're not like loving. <laughs> he's not like he's not like eating cake and like doing a thirty pack of beer on the weekend. So right, which is most people's cheat days. Yeah, I was right. gonna say like you're talking about sushi rolls. Yeah, that's not really cheating. That's just yeah, a little bit of price. It's, it's a lot of sushi though. For him, but he's like what three hundred pounds? Probably, yeah. He's a giant. So yeah. what we would consider a lot is nothing for his for his body though. That's probably true. Yeah. yeah. So you can probably eat five pounds of rice and finally like glyco load. <laughs> that sounds awful. <laughs> probably, but I would tell him eat potatoes, eat the French fries eat instead. The potatoes. Yeah, God, I love French fries. Really? Um, That's your one love. thing that you miss? I love potatoes. Yeah. Potatoes, French fries, chips. I, I like potatoes. I, love I like scalloped or mashed potatoes, but like I can take or leave French fries. I don't really need them. Really? I like oh. the, the waffle fries from Chick-fil-A, and I like the curly fries from Arby's. But oh, see, I don't really care how they come. I just love them. <laughs> I'll, them. I'll take them. French fries? Yes. Yeah. Wow. That's the most excited you got for this whole video. <laughs> <laughs> The way to Allie's heart, bring her French fries. Uh -huh. yeah. I probably won't eat them. <laughs> I bet you would. <laughs> I might have one. Yeah. yeah. Be, That's how different. it starts. Sure, right? <laughs> That's Good. awesome. But it would really get to me if somebody brought them to me and it was made out of fried in coconut oil. Like coconut then I'd fried really oil. eat them. Because I, I wouldn't feel bad. What about peanut oil? Is that good for you? That can't be good. No. What's the, what's the name? Uh, Five Guys does that. Have you ever had them? No. Oh, God. You can, like feel your heart like fighting for its life. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's so getting <laughs> inside your chest. You're like, <laughs> it's It's, yeah. I've eaten Five Guys like, maybe twice in my life. It's delicious, but man, you're flirting with disaster with that one. Yeah. I'd still take the French fries over the bun. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly because yeah. of the gluten, though, and the gluten messes with your gut, and that's a big problem with immunity. Let's talk about gluten. Okay. <laughs> is it, is it really a thing? It, it really is a thing, yeah. Not only so, does it affect your brain negatively, it inflames the white matter of your brain, which is responsible for decision-making and higher-order thinking. Wait, really? Yep, it does. Glu gluten All changes the way you think? Yep. Really? Right. According to MRI. The, the, I think it gets a bad rap for a couple of reasons. One, I, there's a legit issue with celiac disease where some people cannot eat gluten, but then there's people that just choose not to eat gluten. And, and maybe they're choosing for good reasons, but like they can eat it. They just mm -hmm. don't want to. And I, I think that gets... If you, well, if there's, a, there's a good reason not to want to. Okay. Because it causes leaky gut. And What's leaky, that mean? So in your intestine... Um, your intestine is porous, right? But it has, um, it, it's supposed to fit like this really, really tight so that all of the, all the molecules that you're eating stay inside your digestive system and they don't leak out. But what the pro the problem with gluten is that it causes your um, intestines to inflame and kind of loosen to create these little gaps in the intestinal wall. And the problem huh. is it allows molecules like that are big, like proteins to escape. And so then your immune system attacks that as though it's a pathogen and spends its energy just trying to keep that stuff out of your body and trying to manage this leaky gut situation. So while your immune system is busy handling that, then it leaves it open to being attacked by viruses. That's one of the big reasons why eating right and your microbiome, your gut microbiome is so important to your immunity. Okay. Okay. So... Is this what you talk about when you, when you say inflammatory? Mm -hmm. Okay, so these um, foods you eat that are inflammatory are also sacrificing your immune system. Correct. Wow. So this is something that like most Americans are doing to themselves because they're constantly eating stuff with gluten in it. You know, like what, what bread and stuff like that, right? Pasta. Mm -hmm. Beer. Right. Right. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So now more than ever, you need your immune system, you know, running on all eight cylinders. Yeah. And I would say that most Americans, if they just cut out eating things with gluten in it right now, 
I mean, it takes 21 days for your gut lining to reproduce itself. But if you cut it all out in three weeks, it won't be there. Like your immune system will be boosted significantly just by not eating those foods. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's fascinating. It's something to think about if you're one of those people that gets sick all the time. Right. Or has seasonal allergies. There's nothing seasonal <laughs> about seasonal allergies. allergies. That's the thing. Seasonal about allergies. That's your immune system that can't defend itself wow. against normal stuff. Huh. Right. I, a Wait. lot of allergies and things like that are an issue of immunity and your gut really? microbiome. I mean, everybody's got some foods that their body doesn't mesh with biochemically. Yeah. Yeah. But when it comes to like gluten and things like that, I don't care whether it's the actual protein of gluten or whether it's the Roundup or whatever. You can't, you, you can't separate the two anyway, so it doesn't matter. Right. But from the research that I've read from neurologists that have MRIs and have published this, the gluten is what inflames the white matter of the brain, not the Roundup. So the Roundup probably causes a whole bunch of other issues, but let's take that out. So I'll, I'll stop letting Monsanto sue us on this one. So we'll yeah, let that no slide. Problem. So, but gluten, the, because they have been genetically modifying wheat for, since the 1950s, mm -hmm. they've, the, the gluten has increased 40 fold inside of our wheat. So, sure. you know, one fold is a, is a hundred percent increase. So it's a right? it's that fourth, 40,000. It, it's 40,000. It? It's way bigger than I have a calculator. I mean, it's like what? A billion, <laughs> a billion percent more? 44 Four would be 4,000. Yeah. 4,000. Times. Like it's right. it compounded though. Right. It's not, it's not like, okay, it's just 4,000 4, percent more. It's compounded 4, 40 oh, times. It's That's oh. what fourfold is. So twofold is a 400 percent increase. Oh, Threefold is an 800% increase. So it's compounded. Yeah. So when you huh. think of, when you think of Avoca Avogadro's number is, a, is, you know, one to the 23rd power, this would be one to the 40th power. Wow. So big, really, really big. That much more gluten and our bodies just didn't evolve to tolerate it. Yeah. So I don't care about the roundup argument. You can keep the roundup argument. There's enough in there to say if our bodies didn't, don't have the ability to process it, it's going to do whatever it has to do. And so it, our immune system attacks, attacks the issue and then leaves us vulnerable to outside issues. So I would absolutely highly recommend stop eating the pasta and the bread right now. Eat potatoes, eat potatoes with meat, do whatever, but certainly just leave the grains the hell alone. This is why I was like crazy when I, when I went to the store and I'm like, okay, all the pastas and breads are gone, but you guys left <laughs> all the meat and all the dairy and all the cheese. And I was like, oh my God. all the meat over there in California? Uh, well, the meat was gone in Trader Joe's. But, okay. Um, I was going to say, our, our meat got eaten up pretty good, but you know what? I found, um, for some reason, the pork didn't get eaten up that much. And then, this is funny, they, they left, left um, Like there was no tomorrow. Corned, corned beef? beef was, there was a Love ton of corned beef. beef. I they left uh, the Wagyu burgers, you know, like the little Wagyu. I think they were conflating Wagyu with Wuhan. Oh, probably. Yeah, so I bought like a whole bunch yeah. of that. It's a little pricier, yeah. but not much. Well, we had fresh vegetables, potatoes, dairy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cheese, all the fruit section was like untouched. Stuff. Yeah, but then all the canned goods were gone. I was like, really? You need 12 cans of garbanzo beans and all of <laughs> yeah. the coffees and bread. At all the shit that you shouldn't be eating anyway was completely wiped out. Yeah. And I Cereal out, got hit hard. You guys are going to be the ones to get it. You just hoarded a exactly. bunch of stuff that you shouldn't be eating. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I know the cereal got hit hard, but it wasn't like all the cereal. It was like certain types. So like people were like, I can't go three weeks without eating my Frosted Flakes. Oh, yeah, you know? exactly. So, which again, and, God, get away from you're that telling stuff. me sugar isn't an addiction. Oh, I feel... So many kids grew up, I grew up eating like all those cereals like every day for breakfast, like Captain Crunch and Reese's Puffs and all that horrible stuff. And then I thought I was smart when I got into college, started buying Raisin Bran. And so I started looking at it. I'm like, this is pretty much the exact same shit. It's loaded with sugar. It's just as bad, but yeah. it sounded healthy. Yeah. Got so so what, you add some fiber to it. And then you tell people, oh, well, the net carbs are different. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, who came up with the idea of net carbs, by the way? Because it's the uh, same person that, that did anyway. the uh, the heart rate zone. 
I'm pretty sure. And the alkaline water. Oh, this <laughs> yeah. makes your body more alkaline, so therefore you won't get cancer. And I'm like, cancer needs yeah. sugar. Yeah. Doesn't, ah, uh, do you know anything about blood pH? All this stuff, like, it's just fancy marketing. I, if I had a real nefarious kind of personality, just that just wanted to make money off of stupid people, man, I would be so flippant right now. It's, it's frustrating. But I, yeah. I, I can't even come up with this. I can't come up with the dumb stuff that people will buy. It's oh, crazy. I, I can help you out with that. Don't be yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like alkaline water. Are you kidding me? I wonder if I could come up with like a, an anti-caffeine water and then convince everybody that it's the right thing to do because yeah. it'll balance you out once you have too much caffeine. It'll save your adrenals. I don't know. I'm yeah. Yeah. Or stuff with like a lot of sugar in it. It's not sugary. It's high energy. Are you tired of feeling tired at two o'clock every afternoon? You need some more high, high energy cereal at two o'clock. I can't bring my integrity to do it. I just I can't I do can't. it either. I can't. No. I, I'd rather make money doing good things for people than, yeah, than yeah. just playing to their stupidity with marketing ploys. I, I found there's a lot more money to be made in distractions and entertainment than there is in bettering people. Yeah, unfortunately. People don't yeah. want to get better. Yeah, really. people don't. Yeah, it's crazy. But some do. Well, there's, that's, there's some that's out what I'm there. here for. I'm here for those. Yeah, we're here for them. Yeah. We've got a, yeah, we found a decent corner of the market that actually does want to improve. And now more than ever, people actually have time to do it. I love that. Like, I don't have time to go to the gym. Well, the gym's coming to you and now you have time. So what's your excuse now? Yep. Yep. <laughs> I, but you know what? They'll have one. They'll say, I just don't want to, I, I want to be fat. I want to be fat. Okay. I'm down. I'm feeling down today. Right. Yeah. Like, well, you know, help you feel, feel better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A workout, dopamine yeah. will help you feel better. You're depressed, workout. You're yeah. depressed, stop eating carbs. Yeah, stop I worry about the people right now that are that are getting away from their routines. Like people that are not showering, people that aren't working out, those are the people that are, are gonna be the first ones that are gonna get depressed and like potentially kill themselves. Yeah. You know, everyone's talking about this virus and I don't know anything about it. I know about self-help, I know about like mood. That's what makes me nervous because there's okay. gonna be a lot more people getting down and depressed, being all alone and, and getting away from their routines, self-medicating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you can't go to the hospital right now. So it's the only way you can. Right. I mean, <laughs> alcohol sales are I, up. What does that tell you? Are they up? That's what I saw on Twitter. Jesus. Some doctor was like, alcohol sales are up. I wonder why. And I was like, really? Um, people are freaking bored and they're not going to the, they're not going yeah. to, the, to the bar. So I, um, yeah, I, that first week I found myself drinking a little bit more, but I was also, I just finished my book and that's part of my, um, my like reward system is that week I kind of act like a normie or I, I well, drink a little too much. When you're not busy running around, yeah, that's right? if you're at home, then you're like, oh, you know, <laughs> it just, it's a slippery slope. But I honestly think that it those is. are, that, that people like us, where that's just why it happened, will go right back up to normal yeah. when everything's back to normal and we're back to running around doing what we do again. Yeah. We'll get back to it. It'll go back. It'll be a different world. We'll get back to it. It will be different, but I can't, I can't wait to see what happens. It might be better. I it could be better. I think there's going to be a lot of things that are going to come out of it better. I think a lot of small yeah. and medium sized businesses will have more remote workers because they'll see the yes. value of not having the over bloated office buildings yep. and they don't need the staff and people have adjusted and figured out how to work from home. And they'll just give people discounts on computers and printers just like yeah. instead of buying it for the office, they'll just say, here's a discount. It gets to your, it's yours. You get to buy it, but we're going to pay you oh, a little extra over time for it or whatever they're going to do. I think it's going to be a huge benefit. And most people have laptops already. So it's not that hard to move their office stuff home. Right. You know, it's pretty easy. I think, um, I think a lot of those companies are going to find that they're going to be more profitable when they don't yeah. have that office rent to pay. Yeah. Yeah. I think they're afraid that people won't work hard at home, but I don't think they're working hard at the office. So what difference does it make? <laughs> yeah. I think it's a lot like school. You know, the kids are getting yeah. done in a couple of hours with yeah. their schoolwork. It's like, why did you have to go be over there? Yeah. Yeah. That's that, my that big question too. Part of it, right? less, less commuting, less people on the roads. This all seems much better in a lot of ways. It's nice. I think a lot of people that aren't going to have to spend the time in traffic are going to really opt for, for working for remotely if their employer yeah. will let them. Yeah. Um, they're going to get tax write-offs for it, for having a home office. 
Yeah. There's going to be a lot of benefits for the, yeah. for a lot of people staying this way. That's true. And, um, yeah. And that could, that'll play into the market too, right? The more profitable those companies are, yeah. the more money they have to spend on, on employees, the more, right? Yeah. And then some of these things that are unessential, you know, we'll start looking at our lives and saying like, do we really need this in our life? Do we need that? You know, and it's, it, it kind of sucks because there's some job loss to it, but at the same time, like maybe there's better ways for us to spend our time. Maybe we don't characterize it as job loss. We characterize it as a job relocation, That's right? Now I'm not doing this job anymore, but I'm doing that job now. Yeah. And this one's just as good or pays me as well. And I get to be home. And for, I think for solo parents or a family where they have the mom or the dad staying at home, this is going to really help produce more income for them and more spending yeah. power economically, more savings power, because now they're going to have the ability to do work remotely and more employers aren't going to require them to come into an office to sit at a desk to do what they can do at home. Yeah, it's awesome. That's a great way to do it. I love being able to like wake up and just go to work, you know, or that commute time. It's really easy to take that commute time and turn it into gym time. For sure. Yeah. Or quality time with your kids or yeah. time to read or, I yeah. mean, like just go out and be in nature where you weren't before because yeah. you were running around and you didn't have time for it. Now you actually do. It is, it is really nice. Like the, the world feels slower and calmer right now, even though it's chaos. Like everything's slowed down. Yeah. If like the markets. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I've settled into the, like, Oh, this is actually feeling kind of, kind of nice. And I wasn't, yeah. I was working from home anyway. Yeah, me too. The yeah. only difference is I don't get to go to the gym and I don't have to rush my son around to different therapies, but now we're doing teletherapy for him. That's a really cool idea. It's just, it's been really, really helpful because instead of, of me trying to, create the gym environment or the therapeutic environment at home and adjust we're adjusting to where he's spending most of his time and turning this into the into the right environment and i'm able to catch what he's doing and become a more integral part of his therapy of, That's of awesome. his therapeutic process instead of relying on the therapist to do their job one hour a day every day i'm like oh now i can do a lot of i can i can accelerate his, his progress a lot faster, I think. That's what I've noticed in the last two weeks. That's awesome. Yeah, it's been really yeah. good. There's been a lot of like the whole, there's tele-doctor visits now where you like just tell them what your problems are and and sometimes it can help you. Right, you know? like, okay, other than taking my blood pressure, you don't really need me to be there. I mean, we right? could probably take our blood pressure at home, couldn't we? Sure. I, just, I, could, I could probably get on this thing, right? Don't, doesn't our like smartwatch do it? No. That's just heart rate, that's heart rate. Yeah, and the, and the Apple Watch does AFib. But it's not hard to go buy a blood pressure cuff with a motor, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. See them squeeze it. I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Press the button. Uh, pretty much like they do in the doctor's office, right? Yeah. They're not actually like, you know, even though they're trained how to do it with the SPIG manometer, like they're not doing it. They well, press the button and they let it do its job. Well, no, tell, uh, tell them the doctors have gone too far when they start Amazon Prime shipping our shots to us. <laughs> Hey, if they do that, I have got a ton of syringes that I need God. to get rid of. <laughs> really? <laughs> you gonna You're like, I don't want to know why, Allie. <laughs> You're not it diabetic. Was my, it was my son's therapy. Okay. <laughs> I had to give him intramuscular injections twice a day, so I had a lot of syringes left over. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Thanks for having me on, Ryan. Yeah. I really, I really enjoyed being on here today. Thank you so Thank you. much. Thank you. It was fun. Um, where can people find you? They can find me at bodcompany.com. It's in my Twitter bio. It's in my Instagram bio. It's in my LinkedIn bio. Um, you can find me there. And your Twitter is Allie Covington. Covington. It's pretty much where you find me everywhere. I try to stay by the same name. That's LinkedIn, smart. That's the way to do it. Twitter, um, Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just giving away free followers to some random girl named Allie. Exactly. <laughs> Facebook. So, yeah. yeah somebody awesome. Take me up on my offer while you can. Yeah. We'll get a link to that in the show notes below. Allie, it's a pleasure as always. Thanks for coming on the Path Manners podcast. Thanks for I'm having me. I'm Ryan Feldman. Signing off. <laughs>